Mediterranean is basically a closet sea, but it has an uncommon beauty. And these are the images of a voyage we completed on the routes to the east in the turquoise Mediterranean. We used all possible transportation means, by boat, sailing along the coast, and on high seas, by car for our frequent camera car footage, or simply on foot to film the places where environmental or security concerns did not admit any other type of access. But let's introduce the boat to you, Lady Anne, a 72-foot sailing boat, not strictly built for regattas and thus comfortable and inviting. Navigation continues on through the Aegean Islands. We're at the outposts of the Greek world, a few miles from the Turkish coast, whose mountainous outline is visible at the horizon. The bow is now pointing to Finiki on the Lycian coast of Turkey, at the center of a region that tourism has transformed from a fishing and farming economy into one of the richest in this country. On the Lycian coast are some of the most extraordinary archaeological sites of the entire basin. In this area, Alexander the Great fought to conquer his empire. Here the Persians first and then the Romans later tried, albeit unsuccessfully, to defeat the bellicose Lycian people. The Lycian burial places resemble palaces with windows overlooking a variety of landscapes, all highly picturesque. Some inscriptions on the tomb entry doors, at least those not yet stolen, indicate that this area was already settled in the 5th century BC, although the exact date of its foundation is unknown. Rock sculptures are scattered along the entire coast, so much so that it seems an endless open-air museum. There are tombs of all sizes and sited in the most strategic positions. Entire hillsides and mountains are dotted by these magnificent buildings, some resembling a temple portal, others being simple rooms with one single entry. On the Fethye Heights, called Telmosa since antiquity, you can see some really imposing sepulchres, representing ancient building facades, the most important being Amintas, dating back to the 4th century BC. Another area filled with sculptures is Mira, that Strabone lists among the six greatest Lycian cities. A theater from the Hellenistic era is still very well preserved and the Roman modifications to its structure confirm its use as a circus in a later period. Here Paul met the first apostles and from here he later traveled to Rome. 
An enormous number of archaeological sites are scattered along the southern coast of Turkey, including some underwater sites. We came back by boat and are now going towards the underwater city of Keikova, where it's forbidden to swim or dive, though our Turkish kayak can get to just a few meters from the coast and thus we can film walls, stairs and walls gently descending into the water. The entire area is a tourist destination with itineraries well organized by Turkish travel agencies, but the atmosphere is not chaotic at all. In one glimpse, one can see all the Lycian, Roman, and Middle Age ruins, such as fortresses with their bastions and arrow slits. Restful caiques are anchored in the hundreds of bays and inlets fragmenting this magnificently blue sea that one can only discover navigating along the easterly routes. via da, dai grandi centri abitati, dei grandi città per trovare pace Blue Voyage, a journey through the blue. I don't know the exact translation. It's not just a holiday. It's a journey through an ancient past already revisited and retold by some of the people who have navigated these waters. A spiritual voyage experienced as an escape from city life to find peace, concentration, and relaxation in this very selective area, the Bodrum coastline. Over time, these pioneers started offering their homes to friends and colleagues, and their boats were much smaller than the ones we have now, only 10 to 15 meters, while now our caiques are 30 to 40 meters long. <laughs> It's really a journey that's impossible to call a holiday. It's a way to navigate through nature. It's peace and calm sea, and some parts of this coast are inaccessible from land. Therefore, the original concept stands intact. Leave city life stress and find refuge in this sea to devote yourself to the sea and the sun. From the coastline, we moved to the Dalian inland canals. We've reached this locality in low season, but managed to find a young Kurd to guide us through the maze of canals that form a network down to the Dalaman River Delta. In summer, there's a great number of tourists, but in this warm November sunlight, we can quietly enjoy our navigation through cane breaks, admiring the small restaurants along the banks. Here also are rock sculptures and Lycian sepulchres carved into the mountainside above the canals. They're placed in the best location, offering views onto the surrounding landscape. It truly is a unique place, and the Turks consider it a kind of natural sanctuary. At the end of the canal is the ancient port of Kaunos, a little-known archaeological site under restoration with a theater, Roman houses, and breathtaking views. The itinerary takes less than two hours, and it costs, inclusive of boat and entry ticket in Kaunos, less than 10 euros. Back on the canal, we continue filming these incredible sculptures on the cliffside, in this immense open-air museum of funerary Turkish art dating back to the 5th century BC.
back on the boat, we continue on to the coast of the Mughla province. A medieval castle built by the Knights of Rhodes overlooks the entry to the Bodrum Bay. It's the energy. Here the Aegean Sea becomes one with the Mediterranean and here in the ancient Helicarnassus was born Herodotus. Crystal clear, lukewarm sea and no underwater currents. If the Turkish coastline heritage is invaluable, equally rich and priceless is its underwater and marine heritage. And Bodrum Castle has the most complete underwater archaeological museum in the world, according to the most renowned European archaeologists. exhibited objects from the Bronze Age. The most interesting galleries are those with amphorae and a complete reconstruction of a Roman vessel. Other invaluable objects are in the glasses room, safe kept and under a perfect illumination system. The visit to the museum can last an entire day a good guide can give you a good insight into ancient history through the illustration of objects and findings that have rewritten the chapters of our ancestors' life more than once. Let's have a tour around the city, and then we realize that Bodrum is also famous for its boat building yards. Along the marina are hundreds of kayaks fitted for cruising and with all the comforts to spend entire weeks at sea. Traveling from Bodrum towards the east, it's possible to reach the most interesting coastline destination of the entire Turkish coast. Marmaris, Dalian, Fethiye, Kas, Demre, Finike, Kemer, and finally Antalya, the major seaside resort in Turkey, offering unequaled tourist services. Keleichi Marina is well organized for mooring and sailing, and it is really amazingly relaxing to go out in these waters. The area of Antalya is geographically quite varied, where the Tauro mountain pine forest